Hi, welcome in the part 4 of the Java Spring Boot web service series and this is the documentation which we will build. So let's jump to the code. Today I want to show you how to add the Swagger UI to existing web service. And if you don't know what the Swagger UI is, it allows us to visualize and also to test our API. It will be possible through the user interface available in the web browser. You may ask, why do we need this thing? Well, if we are working in a team and our web service will be definitely consumed by some kind of front-end application, it will be a lot easier for other developers to get familiar with our web service which endpoints and HTTP methods are available and also what data he can get. First, we have to add two Spring Fox dependencies to use Swagger UI in our application. Okay then, so we jump to the POM XML of our project and over here at the bottom, between the dependencies tag, we will add two dependencies and the first one is the Swagger 2 and the second one is for the Swagger UI. We need both of these dependencies because Swagger 2 is kind of core and the Swagger UI is extension. Now we have to add new package to our project. So we right click on the source main Java. We select new and we select package. We will name our package config but it also has to be inside of the students package. So we will have to type students.config. Okay, now we can click finish. And here is our new package. Inside our package, we will create a class. So we right click on the package, select new and class. Since it will be the configuration class for our swagger we will name our class swagger config okay we can click finish and there is our class it is very important to remember that this swagger config class must be in the same parent package as the application because otherwise it will not be visible okay First, we have to mark our Swagger config class with two annotations. First one is configuration. So we type add sign. And here is the first annotation. We need this because inside of this class, we will be creating the bin. And the second annotation will be enable Swagger to. This means we want to enable Swagger. Now in our class, we have to create a new method, which must be public and must return the docket object. And also let's name it Swagger API. Okay, we have an error, so we have to import this package. And also let's mark our method with the bin annotation. And we also have to import this. By marking our method with bin annotation, we are saying that bin produced by this method will be managed by Spring container. Okay, then our method must return docket object. So we go to the body of our method and we have to type return new docket. This docket constructor takes the documentation type object as the argument. So we have to type documentation type. And also after the dot notation, we are selecting which version of the Swagger we want to use. And in our case, it will be Swagger 2. After docket object is created, we want to call on it a select method. This select method is returning the instance of the API selection builder on which we can call APIs and paths methods. So now after the dot notation, we type APIs. 
as the argument of this method we will pass static base package method which is available in request handler selectors class so we type request handler selectors and after the dot notation we have to type base package like this as the argument of the base package method we want to pass a string with localization of our controller which one we want to document so in our case it will be students.controllers now also we want to call the paths method as the argument of this paths method we will pass the static method and and this method is available in the class path selectors and now after the dot notation we can select the and method as the argument of this and method we are passing string and this string will be the url on which our student controller is available and in our case it will be slash api slash asterisk and we are doing this that way because we want to match every path that is preceded by API. We have to do one last thing to make our documentation work and this is calling the build method at the end of this chain, like this. Okay, so now let's save it and also let's jump to the student controller because we have to do some small tweaks. So first thing we want to add here is the annotation to the entire class so we use add sign and we will type request mapping and we want our api to be available at the slash api url we also want to add the method parameter to the request mapping annotation of the get hello world method so after the comma we want to type method equal sign request method and we want it to be get if we do not specify the request method for this get hello world method swagger will generate entry for every single http method for this greeting endpoint and we want it to be available only for the get method next thing we want to fix our endpoint names because as you can see all endpoints are singular and this is good practice to make them plural so we go to the every single endpoint and we will add the s at the end okay it's good we also have to change the mapping of this get all students method because as you can see the get all students method has the same mapping as the get student method and they are both available on the same request method which is get the only difference is that the get student method has the parameter id and unfortunately swagger do not know how to handle this situation because he will display only the one of them so we will help him out a little bit and we will change this mapping to all students okay so now we can run our web service it is up and running and now as you can see to get the hello world message we have to precede the greeting with the api and this is because we have added request mapping api annotation to our controller let's test out if we can get other endpoints so we change this greeting to all students and as you can see we have access to the data so we are sure that our web service is working now let's test out the swagger first thing we can do to test it out is changing the url to v2 slash api dash docs and over here we have json object and this object is holding all the necessary configuration data we can use this data in our front-end application to generate interface which will allow us to communicate with the web service and get the data from database okay so now let's check out our documentation and it is available on the url swagger 
dash UI dot HTML. As you can see, here is our student controller, and if we expand it, we have the list of all endpoints exposed by our web service. But it is not all, because we can select the endpoint, and we have the entire description of it, and we can click the Try it Out button, and click the Execute, and as you can see over here, we have the information about the request that has been made. Also, we have the information about the response body, so it's the hello world, and also about the headers. Okay, so now let's hide it and let's try other endpoints. Let's try to add new student to the database. To do it, we have to go to this endpoint with the post method. And over here, we have to click try it out. And we have to provide the parameters. So let's say first name will be Robert. And last name will be Wilson. Okay. So now we click execute button. And as you can see over here, we have made following request on the API student's endpoint with the parameters first name and the last name. And over here is the response. So we have created Robert Wilson student with ID 8. So now we can move to the another endpoint. And it will be this one. So we move over here. We try it out. So now we will fetch Robert from the database. So we have to pass 8 as the ID. And now we click execute. And as you can see, we got the data about the Robert from the database. So now you can see that this Swagger UI is a great tool to document and also test your API. Okay, I think it's all for this video. You can do much more with this Swagger UI, like describing each of the endpoints, responses, and also the models. But I just wanted to show you how to add it to your project and also how to test it. And the most important, how useful it can be. Okay then, remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.